And it's my great pleasure to present our today's speaker, Professor Fedorovsky. And the title is here in the presentation. So thank you for agreeing to participate in our seminar and please go ahead. Thank you very much. So, Alexei, thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, um, I would like to start with uh, thank, um, thanking organizers for inviting me to this seminar. It's a great pleasure to, to speak in um, this meeting. Well, and um, um, I will try to explore three very closely intertwining storylines. Story uh, the approximation by polyanalytic polynomials, okay, the uh, Nivalina domains, in a few minutes I will define uh, this object, and um, some questions about uh, uh, properties of univalent functions belonging to so-called model spaces, uh, that is invariant uh, with respect to the backward shift operator subspaces of the classical Hardy space H2 of square ensemble functions in the unit disk. Well, I will start with the concept of Nivalina domain. It's more or less the, the, the central uh, object and uh, discussing uh, the motivation to study this object. I will uh, I will speak about the approximation problem mentioned above and later on we go to univalence in, uh, in uh, model spaces. So, um, the definition is uh, quite simple, uh, and uh, we are dealing with uh, bounded simply connected domain in the complex plane, and one says that uh, such a domain G is called a Nivalina domain or N domain for brevity if there exists two functions, two bounded fun analytic functions, two bounded holomorphic functions in this domain U and V, such that V, of course, not identically zero, and the following um, in the following equality, um, z bar equal to this quotient, holds on the on the boundary of our domain almost everywhere in the sense of conformal mappings. What uh, what does it mean? Yeah, because here there are several words which we need, of course, to define. Um, this property means exactly that. For almost all points in the unit circle T, we have the following equality of angular boundary values, where F is some conformal mapping from the unit disk D onto our domain. Look, here uh, all these uh, three guys are well defined because uh, the function F, as well as these two quotients, are fun bounded uh, glomorphic functions uh, in the unit disk, so that uh, these functions uh, have almost everywhere in the circle angular boundary values uh, or tangential boundary values. Uh, um, it's the same, and um, we are asking uh, for this uh, identity. Okay, for all okay for all points where almost all points where this all the three guys are well defined. Um, uh, this uh, definition first uh, in this form, firstly uh, appeared in uh, my joint work with uh, John Carmona from uh, Barcelona and Peter Paramona from Moscow. Uh, uh, the work in mathematics in the Bordic Mathematics 2002, uh, but this concept uh, actually appears a bit uh, before. Uh, uh, so the um, the first work um, uh, is uh, this one, and I will explain uh, uh, what is the difference of this context a bit later. So this is the this is the main definition. Uh, so some th some simple remarks um, about uh, this concept. Of course, um, this definition is uh, well defined, uh, which means that it doesn't depend on the choice of our conformal mapping. So if this property holds for some conformal mapping, then of course it holds for any other. Also, in view of classical losing preval of boundary uniqueness theorem, this uh, quotient U over V uh, for any one in a domain is, of course, uniquely defined in, uh, in, uh, in this domain. Well, in the, in the definition, we ask about uh, quality in the sense of conformal mapping, so it's a bit uh, involved with construction. But if uh, 
we are working with Jordan domain uh, with rectifiable boundary, uh, then we, this equality may be understood directly as uh, an equality of angular boundary values almost everywhere with respect to the length on the boundary. So in, in, in the case when J is a Jordan domain uh, with rectifiable boundary, of course, both functions U and V have almost everywhere in the boundary angular limits, and we are able to ask um, uh, about this uh, property directly without taking conformal mapping. Well, um, okay, just a few uh, simple examples. Of course, uh, any disk, every disk in the plane is, of course, never in a domain, but domain which is bounded by some ellipse, which is not a circle, of course, or a domain bounded by some polygonal line is uh, does not possess this property. Um, Another um, why, perhaps um, I will use this uh, this space for writing. Okay, and domain. Now, for example, the unit disk. It's clear because z bar, of course, equal to one over z here. Okay, not and domain. Well, for example, if we take uh, the ellipse DAB, it's a domain bounded by a well, for example, like this. So, um, what we are able to do, we are able to, uh, this is an, of course, this ellipse is an analytic curve, we are able to write. To represent solve this equation uh, in terms of z bar and z, and what we have, we have something like this. Uh, here, plus minus c is just a force of of this ellipse, so it's a point uh, lying inside this domain. And what we have, this function uh, has uh, two branch points here and here. And of course, in view of uh, um, losing preval of boundary uniform theorem, this function cannot be expressed uh, in a desired form. Um, well, if we consider the image of this, of this curve uh, under this mapping, so we obtain some curve which I put gamma prime AB, some oval curve, and we consider the domain bounded by this curve. Well, here we are able to write in some I put here FAB of Z some function, and this function it has branch points points outside. And it has two poles in this domain and no other singularities. So this domain is n domain. Well, um, so it's uh, very unexpected analytic uh, object and why it's interesting to why it's interesting to study this domain and uh, okay and what's important uh, for us to know is that um, these functions u and v in the definition of n domain are not assumed to have any extra regularity. For example, no these functions are not assumed to be continuous in the closure or something more. Just the bounded, bounded functions in this domain. It's important. Well, and um, how this um, how this domain, how this concept is appear and why it's interesting. And now it's uh, time to. Um, uh, Invite uh, the problem of um, uniform approximation of functions by 
so called polyanalytic polynomials. I recall the, con the, the concept of polyanalytic function. Uh, okay, uh, some function uh, g is called polyanalytic of some order n and is fixed integer um, in some open set in the complex plane. If this function um, has the following form, so it's a polynomial in the conjugate variable with the holomorphic uh, coefficients. Of course, uh, this uh, function satisfy um, the elliptic uh, PDE, d bar d bar and power and g equals zero, where d bar is the standard cauchy riemann operator. Um, okay. Uh, and um, an analytic, uh, okay, when n, n equal to, uh, these functions um, are called B analytic, and N analytic polynomials, it's um, N analytic functions uh, whose holomorphic components are polynomials, and also N analytic rational functions. And here it's uh, important to be. Um, uh, Accurate uh, because uh, an analytic rational functions uh, it's not a quotation of two B analytic and a polyanalytic polynomials but just a polyanalytic function uh, with uh, rational holomorphic components and uh, the problem we are interested in now uh, is to describe such compact sets X um, where every function f which is continuous on x and an analytic on the interior, it can be uniformly less approximated by an analytic uh, uh, polynomials. Uh, it's a very classical approximation problem um, which appeared in the last uh, part of uh, previous century in context of uh, general problem on approximation by solutions of elliptic equations or in the context of the whole problem of approximation by so-called rational and polynomial modulus. Um, there are a big um, uh, bibliography about uh, this problem um, and uh, I can uh, uh, remind such mathematicians, such name um, mathematicians who are working with this problem, it's uh, Antonio Farrell, um, uh, John Carmona, Joan Gardera, and many, many others. Of course, this problem uh, was also attracted to an interest of uh, local mathematical school. Well, and um, mm, Mostly, this problem was studied as a problem of um, approximation by uh, an analytic rational functions uh, with poles uh, with singularities outside, of course, of the compact set. And uh, the question about uh, polynomial approximation was stated, but uh, for a long time, uh, the only simple observations, only simple results were known uh, in this problem. So for example, it's not difficult to prove that if x has a connected complement, then uh, the desired approximation property exists. But what happened for compact sets with a disconnected complement was a completely unclear question. And uh, more or less this, uh, this question was the starting point uh, where uh, the concept of new Arnina domain is, was appeared. So the um, the first uh, the first result which I want to mention here is the is uh, my results of 1996 where I find a description of um, rectifiable simple closed curves in the complex plane where the system of analytic polynomials uh, is dense in the space of continuous functions. So and the definition the this the description. Is exactly the following. Um, let me mm, perhaps let me write here. Mm, in this situation, the, uh, this approximation property, this one holds. If and only if. Okay, the domain D, domain bounded by gamma, D 
is not neural linear domain. So, um, if we, uh, okay, let me use this space. So, we have a very simple case of compact sets separating the plane, so the boundaries of Jordan domain, even the rectifiable boundaries. And um, we are asking when, for example, these polynomials and this system of polynomials, when it's dense in continuous functions. So, so the answer is if and only if this domain D is not neural linear. So uh, in the unit circle, we are not able to approximate any continuous function by these polynomials. But in the boundary of, for example, of ellipse, um, we are able to approximate. Also, uh, in the boundary of this oval, we are not able to approximate. There are continuous functions that cannot be approximated. But, for example, in the boundary of any, poly of any polygon, also any continuous function here. This is the positive. The answer is positive. Uh, but perhaps um, I have no time to uh, enter to the proof of this of these results. But uh, actually, the concept of one in a domain appears in this uh, situation, okay, quite naturally. Uh, later on, this result was um, generalized for. Uh, so-called Creatadori compact sets. It's um, the very interesting class, the um, class of uh, compact sets whose boundary coincides with the boundary of um, its polynomial convex hull, x hat, or another word, x hat is the union of x and all bounded connected components of the complex. For this uh, class of compact sets, also there is a criteria uh, in the terms of uh, um, Nivalina domains, and uh, the criterion is the following. If you have a characteristic compact set, uh, you notice that any function continuous and analytic inside can be uniformly approximated on x by analytic polynomials. So it's necessary and sufficient that every bounded connected component of the complement to our compact set is not any one linear domain. So it's uh, just a generalization of the previous idea, but technically it's rather involved with construction. Well, for, co for co compact sets that are not Karateadori, the, the situation is, is much more difficult. So up to now, uh, the final answer for this question is not known. And moreover, for compact sets which are not Karateadori, the approximation conditions depends on the order of, of the order on polyeticity n, because for Cartesian compact sets, this criterion um, is the same for any fixed n greater or equal than two. But in general situation for general compact sets, it does not the case. Well, um, there are several results. Some of uh, for um, not Cartesian compact sets, some of these results are uh, stated uh, in terms of uh, several refinements of uh, the uh, concept of neural linear domain. But uh, the main motivation is these two um, these two results. Okay. Um, uh, the next uh, the next motivation even maybe more simple. Uh, let me recall the concept of uh, Schwartz function of an analytic curve. If gamma is some simple closed analytic curve on the complex plane, it's uh, very easy to show that one can find some neighborhood, uh, open neighborhood of this curve, of this uh, curve, and some holomorphic function S in this neighborhood. Um, that the the, this pro, the following property is satisfied. And this function f is usually called the Schwartz function of gamma. Well, um, it's very well related to our situation. Uh, for example, for Jordan domains with analytic boundary, uh, our, such domain is an even if and only if it's a Schwartz function of its boundary, it's meromorphic. So it has only poles inside, in, inside of domain. Moreover, it's also not difficult to show that uh, uh, the Schwarz function of 
signals of a of the boundary of such a domain is meromorphic if and only if this domain is an image of the unit disk on the conformal mapping by univalent rational function. Well. Um, the next um, uh, the next step in uh, considering of the concept of the Schwartz function is the uh, concept of so-called one-sided uh, Schwartz function. What does it mean? Also, G some bounded domain, and we are able to find a compact set inside G and some function holomorphic uh, um, in this domain. Um, except this co compact set K continues up to the boundary and possessing the same properties, the bar equal to S of Z on the boundary. And uh, even with uh, this um, property of the boundary, um, even this property um, implies some uh, very, very restrictive analytic uh, properties of gamma. For example, uh, Sakai, Makoto Sakai in 1991 uh, proved that um, if uh, the boundary of some bounded domain G admits the one-sided Schwarz function in the sense that I already defined, then uh, this boundary consists of finitely many analytic curves and moreover, uh, Sakai also characterized all um, I think all singular points of these curves are only uh, double points or in y, yes, inward pointing cusps. Okay. So uh, this is the next step. So the Schwarz function is defined in a two sided neighborhood of gamma. The one sided Schwarz function is defined uh, only in one sided neighborhood. And um, uh, what and now our fu function u over v from the definition of Nivalina domain, it may be uh, regarded as a some some generalization of this uh, concept of or what a concept of first function. And our question is how far one can get from analytic domains, uh, but domains with analytic boundary when we. Um, use uh, this um, n domain concept instead of the one-sided Schwarz function. This is the second motivation. And, um, okay, what's possible to do with this domain and how to work? Because uh, from from the very beginning, it seems that this definition, uh, I will return to the, to the definition of Nivalina domain. Well, uh, how to work? Of course, it's possible to construct some concrete examples, or like D scale, ellipse, uh, Newman's oval, or some other, but uh, how to work with this uh, concept? Because um, if the definition use some very, very strange analytic terms. And uh, the first observe the first K note observation is the following is the relations between new and domain and uh, so called pseudo continuation property of functions. Okay, uh, now G be some bounded simply connected domain and phi some conformal mapping from the unit disk onto this domain. And it's not difficult to prove that uh, G is Nivalina domain if and only if uh, uh, this function phi admits a pseudo continuation, or more precisely, a pseudo continuation of Nivalina type, which means that we are able to find two functions, say F1 and F2, um, bounded holomorphic all in the ex in the um, exterior of the unit disk. Such that, of course, the function f2 is not identically zero, and for almost all points in the boundary, we have this, the following equality of angular boundary values. Um, let me highlight that here there are no conjugation. So what we have, we have this is the unit disk. Here we have a function phi, which maps d conformally onto g. g. And here we have these two functions, f1 and f2. And what we need? We need that 
The, this function, of course, almost everywhere in the circle has angular boundary values. And this function from the inside of D has angular boundary values. And what we need, we need that this angular boundary values um, should agree for almost all points on D. Okay, mm, just using this um, description, it's possible to um, uh, prove more or less immediately uh, the following so called density property of the domains. In any neighborhood of an arbitrary simple closed curve, one can find an analytic uh, contour, there is a boundary of some Jordan Neuanina domain. How to prove this? Um, if uh, our domain G is a uh, Jordan domain, then we are able to, um, then phi is continuous in the, in the closed disk, and we are able to approximate this function, uh, and since phi is univalent, we are able to approximate it by univalent polynomial with uh, some, with an arbitrary precision. And uh, of course, uh, the, the rational function or polynomial, of course, admits that the continuation is clear. And this is the uh, proof of this, uh, this is the proof of this property. Okay, so this pseudo continuation property is the first uh, tool to work with Neuanlina domains. Okay, and uh, the next ingredient, we are able to invite model spaces. What is the model spaces? Uh, I already said that this is the spaces um, are to, um, invariant with respect uh, to the backward shift operator subspaces of the Hartley space H2, um, invariant with respect to the backward shift. Its uh, spaces are well known uh, and they are characterized by inner functions. I recall that an inner function is a bounded glomorphic function in the unit disk such that its modulus equal to uh, one for almost all points in the boundary. By modulus, I mean, of course, the angular boundary values. And uh, each uh, space, uh, any invariant space of the backward shift operator in this in H2 has this uh, form uh, K theta, so it's an orthogonal complement to the space theta multiplied to H2. It's a classical Berling theorem. The term model spaces for these spaces K theta was uh, suggested in the 90s by Nikolai Nikolsky uh, from St. Petersburg uh, and now from Bordeaux uh, in view of the remarkable role that these spaces play in the functional model of uh, 94 years. Um, okay, but unfortunately, I have no time to enter to this very interesting uh, topic. And uh, com combining the pseudo continuation property, uh, this descrip description of model spaces, and uh, the remarkable result by uh, uh, Douglas uh, Shields and uh, Shapira, uh, we are able to state uh, the following uh, description of our class of domains. So if uh, our domain is Nivarlina, then if some domain G is Nivarlina, then there exists an inner function, uh, theta such that the conformal mapping uh, belong to this model space. And uh, vice versa, uh, if you have, uh, if that is some inner function uh, and F is some bounded univalent function from the space K theta, then the image of uh, the disk under this mapping is a Nivarlina domain. So this um, this statement, this result, is a way how to construct. But the difficult question is to find univalent functions in this very in these spaces. And uh, the next uh, con the next con uh, discussion uh, will be about uh, about the following. Clear questions. The first, uh, the first question is, of course, to describe such inner functions uh, such that the model spaces uh, KC contains bounded inner functions. Maybe it's almost empty class, or maybe not. The next, uh, if we have um, uh, this. Uh, 
function. Then, of course, it's interesting to uh, understand geometrical uh, metrical properties of these domains, no more precisely their boundaries. So the most uh, natural question is uh, how large uh, can be the boundary or even the accessible boundary of uh, an linear domain? No, and uh, the one question which looks more technical, but uh, it's very um, related with uh, the previous one, is the following. We have a univalent uh, rational function in the unit disk uh, of the fixed degree M, without poles, of course, in the closed disk. And um, we are interested in uh, how fast uh, the, length of the, bound, the length of the boundary of the image may grow uh when n tends to infinity these questions we will discuss and um okay we, uh, which spaces uh, k theta may contain bounded univalent functions so the answer is um, not not very easy but uh, understandable and uh, interesting well uh in order to um, formulate this, this answer, we need to recall some basic facts about inner functions. So any inner function can be expressed, of course, in the form of a uh, Blaschke product uh, multiplied to a um, singular inner function. So um, the Blaschke product is, the, is this function B. Um, uh, such that the points A in the unit disk satisfy this so-called Blaschke condition, and the singular inner function is the function of uh, such type where mu s is some finite uh, positive singular measure on the unit circle. And uh, and we have the following result, which was um, obtained in, in two words. The first proof uh, was um, in this uh, paper um, submitted to archive by Anton Baranov, Alexander Borichev, and myself. And uh, later on, a uh, much more shorter proof was obtained by Yuri Bilov and myself, and it was uh, published in Russian Mass Surveys in, in some years ago. Uh, and the description is the following. Let theta be an inner function, then this space k theta contains bounded equivalent functions, if and only if. Uh, one of the following two conditions is satisfied. The first one, theta has a zero. No, it's a trivial case. Um, in this case, just a single Cauchy kernel of, uh, with the pole one over a, where a is this zero. It's um, the desired function. And uh, when theta is a singular inner function, um, and the corresponding singular measure of mu s is such that there exists a berlin carlison set of this mu, mu measure positive. What is the berlin carlison set? It's a subset of the unit uh, circle uh, for which the following uh, property is satisfied. This set uh, was first appeared as a boundary set of analytic uh, functions in the disk uh, which are smooth up to the boundary. So it's a known concept. And what's more interesting and in some sense intriguing here, that uh, the property, this property too, the existence of a set, berlin carlson set of uh, mu s measure posit uh, positive, uh, is also an uh, assertion sufficient condition that guarantee that the corresponding space Ks contain mildly smooth functions, for example, functions from the standard Dirichlet space in D. This was proved uh, approximately 10 years ago by uh, Dmitry Hevinson and Konstantin Diakonov. And the same, uh, the same property, the same condition uh, was also the condition of existence of univalent functions. Well, so this is the description. And uh, the next, uh, what we uh, what we want to do, uh, we want to find in uh, some model spaces, uh, okay, univalent bounded univalent functions uh, having some prescribed boundary behavior. This is the program. What we want to do, of course. Um, 
it's more natural and perhaps more uh, technically more clear how to work uh, with the model spaces generated by Blaski products. And uh, it, it is uh, the case and um, what we want to do here. Approximately, uh, I'm sorry, uh, assume that uh, uh, N is some Blaski product, and moreover, let's assume that uh, this um, Blaski sequence is also inter like, interpolating or Carlson uh, sequence, which means that this, uh, this, condition, uh, this condition holds. Then uh, this system of functions this system of functions forms a risk basis in the corresponding uh, model space generated by this Blaski product B. And we are able to uh, construct our functions, to construct our functions in, in the form of the following theories, okay, where Cn is some coefficients, and An is the elements of um, interpolating Blaski sequence. But what we need to do with these uh, functions? From, if we want to have some regularity, or if, first of all, if we want to have univalence, we need some sufficiently fast decay of Cn and some, maybe some special behavior of uh, some additional conditions on uh, these Blaschke points A. But if we have, uh, if we want to have uh, the boundary which is not too regular, then these coefficients cn need to decay not so fast. And this is the place. Uh, this is the place where where we are able to play. And the first example. Um, it, of the first example uh, was an example of Nivalina domain with nowhere analytic boundary. And this example was constructed by Maxim Mazalov from Smolensk uh, in 1997. And his construction um, is uh, quite similar uh, to the construction which I explained. Uh, so the uh, conformal mapping from the unit disk to the domain, which is his example, uh, also has this uh, exact precisely this form. So okay, we already have nowhere analytic. The next step um, was the uh, the example of Nivalina domain. So I will explain here the whole history hist history line uh, because um, it uh, shows how it uh, this uh, activity developed and uh, shows how. Um, how we work. Uh, the, ne the next example was the example of Nivalina domain uh, with boundary of the class C1, but not C1 plus alpha for any uh, for every alpha from the, between zero to one. Um, and we, uh, this construction first was given in uh, more uh, more technically involved terms, but uh, later in uh, our work with Anton Baranov, we was able to modify this construction and to put it into this context. And moreover, we are able to prove um, a bit more than, the, for example, the uh, corresponding Blaschke sequence uh, in, uh, in such kind class of examples may accumulate to every closed subset of the, you know, of the unit circle. And, and this, this, um, in the, and the boundaries, C1, but not C1 plus alpha. The next, the, the next step was uh, to construct an one in a domain in some sense with almost unrectifiable boundary. What means almost unrectifiable? It means that we are able to construct the function of this form, so the function belonging to some uh, model space generated by Blaschke product, such that its derivative doesn't belong to a hardy space HP for any P bigger than one. No, it's almost unrectifiable. And it was uh, 2011. And in, after five years, 
The first example of uh, Nivalin domain, Jordan Nivalin domain with no rectifiable boundary, uh, was constructed. Also, this step was made by uh, Maxim Pazalov. Um, and uh, as previously, uh, the form is the same. So, uh, mo much more difficult uh, construction. So, the very specific uh, construction of uh, Blaschke sequence and the specific construction of coefficients. Okay, but it's possible to, to do. Um, moreover, in two years also, Maxim made the next step and construct the first example of Nivalina domain uh, whose boundary uh, has a Hausdorff dimension bigger than one. And up to now, uh, all these uh, constructions was in the spaces generated by Blaschke uh, products. What's happened for singular inner functions? If uh, our singular measure has atoms, then it's possible uh, to show uh, to show easily by this criteria that um, the respective model space contains bounded unit functions, and in particular, this is the case for a tip trivial uh, for the most simple uh, singular inner function. Uh, just the respective singular measure has one atom. Uh, equivalently, we can consider uh, the respective space in the disk. Equivalently, it's possible to work with the Pelevinar space in the uh, half plane, and it's possible to prove uh, that this space also contains, of course, bounded unilateral functions. But uh, it's an existing result. But just a few examples uh, are uh, of such functions are known. And moreover, all known examples uh, move uh, upper half plane to um, domains uh, with very, very good, with very regular boundaries. So it's. And uh, what is the. Okay, perhaps um, let me very, very briefly, I perhaps not uh, speak about this, just show it in the slide. Uh, I recall the domain of uh, Hausdorff dimension. And uh, I recall the concept of an accessible boundary points. Uh, so if a, some bound is simply connected to the main, then the set uh, consisting of all points uh, uh, which are accessible by some curve from the domain. Uh, this uh, point is usually called an accessible part of the boundary or an accessible boundary. And it, it may be shown that uh, this domain coincide uh, with the uh, images uh, of all so-called FATU points of the conformal mapping. If you have a conformal mapping from the unit disk onto this domain G, then uh, at almost all points, this uh, F has angular boundary values, uh, and this uh, the set of all such points uh, is called a FATU set of F. And it uh, may be shown that the accessible part of the boundary is exactly the image of this FATU set. Well, and uh, okay, what is the result? Uh, what is the final result in this uh, line of uh, research? Um, so we are able to prove, it was a joint work with Yura Belov and uh, Sasha Borechev, uh, that for Nivalina domain, even the accessible boundary of Nivalina domain may have every Hausdorff dimension between one and two, including the boundaries, including the borders, one and two. So for every bet, there exists also a function of this form and I will try to explain how to construct it. And uh, this uh, function uh, maps the unit disk onto the Valina domain such that the house of dimension of each uh, accessible boundary is exactly that. The same result may be obtained, but unfortunately, with a small uh, difference. Here, the accessible boundary, but here, the whole boundary. But the same result may be obtained uh, also you know, for uh, univalent functions belonging to Pelevinar space. So, in the case of space generated by Blaschke products and in the case generated by singular functions. So, uh, these two results uh, show that uh, we can get very far away from domains with analytic or piecewise analytic boundary when we change uh, the concept of a Schwarz function uh, with the concept of this U over V function for Nevanlina domain.
And how this uh, how this construction works, I will try to um, okay. Perhaps uh, I will say uh, not very precise, but I will try to explain the the idea. Um, the important idea is to construct so called uh, Nivalina needle. What is the needle? Is the domain uh, very similar to the disk? And in one point we have very narrow and very long needle, something like this. It's an almost disc, but uh, we uh, perturb it in one point to have this, uh, this needle. And um, what is this, con uh, what this needle is uh, constructed? It's constructed uh, by, um, okay, by function of this, uh, of this type. Uh, we have two almost independent parameters b and n b is very small and integer n is very large and um, so this is the out disk unit disk d and this is the segment this is the segment where we put the poles of this uh, of these functions um, where are, because uh, because of uh, behavior, respective behavior of uh, this uh, CK and because of this uh, term, uh, of this this function f is univalent in the unit disk. Of course, it maps onto some new one linear domain, and this domain uh, KF has the following form. And moreover, um, moreover, we have a more or less good control of derivative of this function in D, and where we need it uh, to have a very uh, accurate, uh, we have the control in this small disk uh, here. Well, this uh, this construction was uh, firstly suggested by Maxim Mazalov, and uh, using these uh, needles, uh, he was able to construct um, the example of uh, domain with unrectifiable boundary. He grow needles. Uh, okay, the first is here, and he grow needles here, or something like this, such that the sum of these lengths, of course, tends to infinity. And uh, what we uh, okay something like this yes he, um, and uh, what we done after that um, working with this function and um, constructing this needle so taking uh, W, K, C, K, N, B and all other parameters with much more accurate control of, this der of the derivative of the function here, it's uh, possible to uh, you know, construct needles, new needles, growing not only from different points of, uh, of this big part of the boundary, but also growing um, from No, more or less from the tip of this needle, something from here, from here, and then from here, and doing work, making uh, this construction, working in such a way, we in some sense imitate imitate here by these needles. We imitate in some sense the construction of so-called H3, the well-known uh, fractal set uh, having. Uh, uh, Having dimension two or or less, if we make the para uh, parameter corresponding parameters of this set. Well, uh, but it needs, of course, uh, very very delicate very delicate control on the derivatives of f in the point or near the point where this uh, derivative behaves very very bad. But it's possible. But it's possible to construct. So perhaps um, uh, it was the very, very, very rough uh, scheme how to how to construct. So we called this type of domains uh, hedgehogs, uh, not because uh, all pictures that we tried to uh, draw by hand uh, was more or less similar to to this uh, curious and uh, nice animal, uh, and. Uh, and so called, we sometimes use the term <laughs> Nevalina Hedgehog. Uh, 
uh, for these uh, domains. Uh, okay, um, I see that uh, my time is uh, almost um, exhausted, and uh, and perhaps I will stop here because I more 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 or less explained two uh, most important uh, questions about neural in the domains uh, and about uh, bounded univalent functions in model spaces, their existence, and uh, what is the possible boundary behavior. So more, the answer is more more or less uh, the following. Any uh, any behavior in uh, metrical sense. So any domain may be uh, with this in this class. So uh, this concept is uh, this definition of Neverland domain is very very far reaching generalization of uh, uh, of the Schwartz function. But uh, this domain exists, and these domains uh, plays a role in, for example, in uh, polynomial approximation, polyanalytic polynomial approximation, and moreover, these domains, in fact, uh, plays a plays a role in several other uh, pro approximation polynomial approximation problems for other elliptic uh, PD. Okay, but perhaps it's a topic of uh, some separate uh, separate talk. Well, so uh, thank you for your attention, and if there are some questions, I am ready to answer. Well, thank you very much for a very nice presentation, and we have time for questions. So if any questions, please raise a hand or just go ahead and ask. Maybe I have a small wondering. Meanwhile, you mm -hmm. said this. You you have this um, definition of large boundaries, but can you have a characterization characterization within these boundaries? How large it can be, or can you characterize them depending on uh, this mm -hmm. uh, definition? Uh, no, I by large boundaries. Okay, I mean, uh, I mean uh, the boundary. <laughs> okay, the boundary for, for example, having Hausdorff dimension bigger than one, mm -hmm. or uh, having the Hausdorff dimension exactly yeah. two, more or less what you want. In fact, okay, okay. Okay. So, it, if there is a dependence of your results on this dimension, maybe I need something. Mm, uh, you, no, it's only a plain situation because uh, the, because all the all, all these uh, constructions. Okay, it's mm, no, it's only plain situation because uh, how to uh, how to see about mm. uh, the possible property in um, multi-dimensional case. I don't know. Perhaps okay. uh, nothing has works. Okay, but uh, I mean, uh, there are no investigation in this direction, or no idea. No, how to do this. no. I know that uh, this uh, concept plays some plays some role in uh, um, theory of uh, theory of functions on Riemann surfaces. There are some works of uh, colleagues from Krasnoyarsk who use this uh, who use this uh, concept, but actually, it's also a two dimensional situation. No, the plain ones are more, more, uh, uh, more general situation, more general manifold, but actually it's a two-dimensional situation. Okay, very nice. So these are very recent results. As I see uh, well, some right? of them, yeah, yes, more, more, more or less. This uh, this story starts in the middle of nineties in the uh, previous okay in the previous century. So we are very very old people, yes. <laughs> what and uh, the and the final results are very very recent. Yes, it uh, took a lot of uh, efforts to do. <laughs> yeah, I see. I see. It's a very nice result. Thank you. So maybe more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems uh, necessary to, oh. to become a bit more familiar <laughs> with the concept. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, uh, thank you. Let's thank speaker for very nice presentation. Let's open our. Thank you very much.